This is a revision video for the behavioural approach to explaining phobias and the specification identifies you should know the two process model including classical and operant conditioning. The first thing to say is that the behaviourists, their basic assumption is that all of our behaviours are learned and so therefore phobias are learned. It's our response to something in the environment which will cause a phobia according to their explanation. And it's classical conditioning that, so the two process model means classical and operant conditioning. And it's the classical conditioning that will initiate the phobia and operant conditioning that will maintain the phobia. And we're gonna look at both of those, but I've got some really silly animations here for you because it's something that you certainly need to make a note of. Classical conditioning initiates the phobia and operant conditioning maintains the phobia. The key study for this is the Little Albert study, which I'm sure that you would have looked at in your lessons. Um, I'll put a link to the video clip of the Little Albert study in the description below. And so you can see what's, you can see what happened and just refresh your memory. It's only a couple of minutes. But Little Albert was six months old and he wasn't scared of rats. And Watson and Rayner decided to try and initiate a phobia of rats in him. And the way they did it was through classical conditioning, which means learning by association. So first of all, they showed little Albert some rats and he quite liked them. He had, he had a very, he had no response really. He was a bit curious and quite, wasn't really bothered by them. But then they decided to um, make a really loud banging sound behind little Albert, who was only a baby. So he was really frightened by that. And they, in the conditioning process, they paired the loud bang with the rat. So every time they showed him a rat, they caused this loud bang until eventually, even when little Albert saw the rat, he then was very fearful because he had learned to associate the loud bang with the rat. And the other important thing that you should take note of is that once a phobia has been initiated, then it will be generalized to other similar things. So for example, um, Albert also feared a non-white rabbit, which was a furry object. And in that picture, um, Watson or Rayner, one of them, is dressed up as Santa Claus with a big scary mask and Albert was also fearful of that. So make sure that you make a note that once the phobia has been initiated through the classical conditioning that it will be generalised to other similar things. So if you had a fear of the sea because something bad happened then you might generalise that phobia to rivers as well for example. And the other thing that you need to do is use the correct terminology to, th to show that learning through association. So the unconditioned stimulus was the bang, the, and that caused an unconditioned response of fear. The neutral stimulus was the rat, and that caused no response from little Albert. Then during the conditioning process, you pair together the unconditioned stimulus, which is the bang, with the conditioned stimulus, which is the rat. So you can see the neutral stimulus has now become the conditioned stimulus and you still get an unconditioned response because the loud bang is still there. And then eventually the conditioned stimulus will cause a conditioned response of fear. And that's how the phobia is initiated. The maintenance of a phobia is learnt through reward and so it's learnt through operant conditioning which sounds quite strange doesn't it because when you're phobic of something you are really frightened of something and it's hard to think that you would be rewarded for that but what you're rewarded for when you're phobic is avoidance of the thing you're scared of. Um, I've put a picture on the screen of some incredibly cute dogs because I used to have a dog phobia and it wouldn't matter how cute the dog was or whether it was a puppy or anything like that. I was really phobic of them and would avoid them as much as I could. So every time I avoided the dog, I would feel intense relief and that is negative reinforcement because negative reinforcement means that it's the removal of something unpleasant causes a reward. So in this case, avoidance of a dog is removing the unpleasantness of the fear. And that means that every single time somebody avoids their phobic stimulus, so for me, a dog, you are stamping in that behavior. You are negatively reinforcing and rewarding the behavior of avoidance and that maintains the phobia. So we're going to look at some of the evaluation points for um, the theory. So the theory is that we learn our phobias, we initiate them through classical conditioning and we uh, maintain them through operant conditioning. 
And so there's some evidence for and against that idea. And researchers have found many people do recall a specific event at the initiation of a phobia, like being bitten by a dog. And that does support the behavioral explanation. So that's evidence for the idea that phobias are initiated through um, frightening experiences. Um, however, Sue et al. said that different phobias may be the result of different processes. So she said that agrophobics, which is where people are scared to go outside and scared of open spaces, could be because of an incident. Something like frightening might have happened and that makes people scared to leave their house. But she said that things like arachnophobia, which is a fear of spiders, is more likely to be learned through modelling, which is social learning theory, or it could be evolutionary. So that is evidence against, and we'll look more about that in another evaluation point. Another strength of the behavioural explanation is that the behavioural treatment is effective. So if the behavioural treatment is effective, then that means that the explanation, the behavioural explanation is probably valid. And you will probably know that the behavioural treatment for um, phobias is systematic desensitisation. And you can see in that picture there, someone's actually got a tarantula on their hand after, the, after experiencing systematic desensitisation. And so systematic desensitisation is basically counter conditioning. It's where you pair the, um, the phobic stimulus with a relaxation technique um, systematically. So you have kind of gradual exposure therapy. So first of all, you just think about a spider and you pair that with a relaxation technique until you don't feel frightened. And then you work your way through more and more frightening things until eventually your learned response to the phobic stimulus is relaxation. So um, a researcher called McGrath found that systematic desensitization is effective in 75% of patients. And so that's why if that therapy is effective, it's an indication that, yes, phobias are learned. So if you can kind of unlearn them, then it indicates that you learned them in the first place. However, a uh, criticism, a limitation of the explanation is the diathesis stress model, which emphasises genetic explanations. So a, a diathesis, hopefully you will know that a diathesis means that you have got a genetic vulnerability for something. That means that you may have inherited a gene that makes you vulnerable to something, in this case, vulnerable to a phobia. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a phobia or actually get the thing that you've been born with a genetic predisposition for. It's usually something stressful in the environment which triggers it. So if you're bitten by a dog, then that could initiate a phobia of dogs in people who have a diathesis, this genetic vulnerability, but not in people without. Because, and if you think about it, not everybody who's been bitten by a dog has a dog phobia. If you look at this woman here, she's happy as Larry. She's been bitten by a dog, couldn't care less. You know, she's got her own dog and she doesn't care. So the two process model is a limited explanation. We, we say that it's environmentally deterministic, which means that it's saying that you, if you experience something like being bitten by a dog, then you will definitely get a phobia. But that's not always the case it's too deterministic and it doesn't account for those genetic factors in acquiring a phobia. Another limitation is the idea that some phobias have an evolutionary component and we call that a biological preparedness. This was by Seligman, I do believe. And it's the idea that some of our phobias, so there's a, a picture there of a snake. So snakes and spiders and heights, those types of things, it's, it's hypothesize that perhaps those come as a an adaptation from our evolutionary past because many many people are scared like and have a phobia of things like spiders and snakes um and often snakes that having ever seen a snake they you know but they just are phobic of them and it's thought that perhaps um it's to do with this like evolutionary adaptation and that accounts why people tend to develop phobia like they don't develop phobias for things like cars and guns which are far more dangerous than spiders um but we do develop phobias for um you know snakes um alongside that you could also mention that researchers fail to replicate the little albert study when they use wooden blocks rather than a live animal and that suggests that phobias may have an evolutionary component because whichever baby they decided to use, I hope it wasn't poor little Albert again, um, they couldn't initiate a phobia of wooden blocks 
it was only with live animals that the phobias occurred. Um, another evaluation, another criticism is that the behaviourist explanation is reductionist, determinist, oversimplified and ignores cognitive factors. So when we use the word reductionism, remember we're saying reductionism means that we've reduced a complex phenomena into its constituent parts. So in this case, we've reduced the complex phenomena of a phobia into simple like stimulus response explanation. And that doesn't really account for like a wealth of other factors like evolutionary or cognitive factors. So it's deterministic because it's saying if this stimulus response thing happens, then you will get a phobia. It's over, oversimplified and doesn't consider cognitive factors that have contributed to the phobia. So somebody might have a social anxiety, which is really complex and might have involved like irrational thoughts, which is a cognitive component, like, well, people don't like me. And so the cognitive and cognitive behavioral therapy is found to be effective when treating social phobias. And that suggests that cognitive factors were responsible in the first place. If you think about a school phobia, um, a picture there from America from like a high school shooting, somebody might be phobic of school because they know what's happened in other schools in America or other countries um, and think, I don't think that I can be kept safe. I don't think it's a safe place for me to be, which is actually fairly rational and phobias tend to be irrational. And so the behaviourist approach doesn't account for those factors. What I would like you to do, especially if you're one of my students, is have a go at this question here. It says, explain how claustrophobia, which is fear of being in confined spaces, could be learned through classical conditioning and use all the key terms to explain. So I've got a picture there of a lift and you might talk about that the lift is a neutral stimulus and then think of something which would be an unconditioned stimulus, which caused fear. So something you could even just use a loud bang because we're always you know, scared of loud bangs. but have a go at that question as a four marker to show how um, initiation of a phobia of, of claustrophobia could happen through classical conditioning and then you re need to really stretch yourself um, because this is definitely coming up in the exams 2022 and could come up in any other exam so i think that you should try this timed essay and you should allow about 20 minutes to write it um, when i say that what i mean is Spend some time writing the essay and kind of editing it and making it as good as you can and then practice doing the essay in 20 minutes because that's how long you would get in the exam to do a 16 marker around 20 minutes. So the stimulus, this is a 16 marker with a stimulus and it says that Sangeeta is 36 and has a dog phobia. When she was nine, she was bitten by a dog. She won't visit anyone who has a dog. And if she sees a dog in the street, she crosses the road. Her friend's cat had kittens and Sangeeta decided to get one for her children as a surprise. But when she went to pick him up, she felt nervous and decided not to get him. Outline and evaluate the behavioural, the behaviourist approach to explaining phobias. Refer to Sangeeta in your answer. 16 marks. So look at that cute kitten. <laughs> Sangeeta has a dog phobia, but something you definitely need to kind of think about that is why isn't she getting a cat if she's got a dog phobia and that that relates back to that idea that phobias become generalized to other things and so for her her dog phobia has been generalized to kind of most pets by the looks of it no matter how cute they are so when you get a 16 marker with a stimulus then you have to outline the theory first don't just like rush into talking about sangeeta um, and her phobia. First of all, you need to outline the behavioural approach to explaining phobias. So basically just outline the two process mad model using all the key terminology and that's for six marks. Then you need to apply it to Sangeeta in the middle of your essay, that's what I would do. So you're going to have two paragraphs because it's worth four marks. So you're going to explain how, uh, like why she's phobic of dogs and the fact that she won't get the 
the kitten because that phobia has been generalized. So you need to just think of something which is really obvious, like the fact that Sangeeta was bitten by the dog initiated the phobia, but make sure you really apply the theory. So you're saying the dog, um, other dogs should be a neutral stimulus, but because she was bitten by the dog, the, the pain of being bitten by the dog and the fear um, has now initiated that phobia. Um, and then you need to evaluate the, at the end of it, you need to evaluate the theory for six marks. And so I would aim to do three evaluation points because we get roughly two marks per evaluation point. Um, make sure you've got a strength and a limitation and then whatever else you want. You could just do two evaluation points, but if you do, you have to make sure they're in more detail. So the examiners will talk about depth versus breadth. So you can either do two evaluation paragraphs in detail or three in less detail. And those are your picture references.